All righty, viewers. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to apologize, viewers, about, uh, you know, not being able to run this game at 4K at the moment. Yeah, I'm running it at native resolution. I think uh, I, like, have... I would say that we're, we're, that's fair enough, uh, like, uh, that the, I didn't have a lot of uh, emulation bugs uh, throughout. Uh, at the beginning, if I remember correctly, at the, be the beginning, I did have some problems that I that I had to iron out. Uh, but overall, like it's, uh, this game is not that that bad to emulate. So yeah, probably the best way to play it. Even better than playing it on a on the original hardware. Well, mainly because it's a <laughs> mainly because it's an uh, an RPG, you know. Because uh, you need the turbo mode and uh, the ability to save anywhere. Especially if you want, you know, if you barely have enough time to actually, uh, to play and you immediately want to stop. Yeah, but emulation definitely is, uh, definitely have been a savior for me. Uh, anywho, viewers, uh, hmm. Like, in terms of characters... Well, Pellegrin and Margulis's uh, entries got updated. Might as well just start reading these. Uh, nothing about Pellegrin, really. Uh, born of the people of Zohar from Mictim, like Margulis. She gives her all as an Inquisitor in order to facilitate a return to the Holy Motherland of Lost Jerusalem. It appears that she had some form of uh, relationship with Jin Uzuki in the past, and that both of them continue to carry that with them. Carry feelings, you mean? Well, not Jin. <laughs> not Jin. Jin didn't care that much. Probably uh, her as well. I think we've read all of that. Upon becoming a uh, colonel of the Galaxy Federation Special Ops, he received orders from Heinlein. In his capacity as a member of Ormus and began secret intelligence activities in earnest. The events that occurred during that time tied Margulis and Jin together with strong bonds of fate. Born a member of Planet Mictim's uh, People of Zohar, he resented the Galaxy Federation for its destruction of his homeland and plagued and pledged loyalty to Cardin Heinlein in hopes of fulfilling the people of Zohar's greatest wish, a return to the Holy Motherland of Lost Jerusalem. Uh, the, well, they're never, they're never gonna get back there, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, like, uh, these entries, these other entries with the other characters, they're, they're, I think they're, all of them are gonna be from Pipe Piper. They're not gonna be really interesting to me. Uh... What's the most interesting stuff that I can read? Here, maybe events. A mass murder incident at the uh, government VIP nursing plant. Nursing plant incident. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, also a Pied Piper... Uh, ...thing that happened before. Mass murder incident at the government VIP nursing plant in Drapper on planet Abraxas in TC4667. Based on conditions at the crime scene, it was assumed to be the work of Voyager. While it is unknown why Voyager massacred so many uh, infants... Whoa. Whoa, they were infants? Damn. Voyager is a, like, uh, is a shithead. While it is unknown why Voyager massacred so many infants, post-crime reports stated that large quantities of 
specific information was report reported lost from the brains of the deceased children? Huh. I wonder if that ha has something to do with the realians being implanted with certain programs. But I don't think... Uh, like, I don't think realians actually... I don't think they grow realians as kids. They immediately grow as, like, in... In, uh, in adult form immediately, so... Well, except for Momo, because... Because uh, Yoki Mizrahi is a... Uh, is a perv! In interesting. I, I gotta be honest, viewers, like, Pied Piper... Sounds like an interesting game, really. In terms of uh, the scope and events. The massacre of the uh, of the goodwill ambassadors in virtual space. That is ambassador lockup incident. Another Pied Piper event. The incident in TC forty six sixty seven in which the Galaxy Federation goodwill ambassadors were killed by Voyager within a virtual space constructed within the UMN. And Voyager's uh, is a piece of shit. <laughs> the selection of the Goodwill Ambassadors, as well as the preparation of the venue for the Amnesty Summit, had been performed by Donald Marcond. I don't know who that is. A special representative to the planet Abraxas Archon Zone. The Amnesty Summit was intended to diminish the the consciously maintained distance between the Emigrant Fleet and the Galaxy Federation before the pilgrimage meeting, where a divide and rule system for Abraxas would be decided on. However, the incident became... I don't think that's a run-on sentence, by the way. I don't think you write that like that. However, the incident became the grounds for a further worsening of their relationship. Furthermore, according to records, all of the children who had been selected as Goodwill Ambassador had been born on Abraxas. By children, I think they mean like ch children of the Zohar, or like uh, descendants of the Zohar. Like they don't, uh, they're not actually children. So... Yeah, that's that. Uh, locations, weapons, story. That's all of these are gonna be events. I think I've read all of the federal reports, right? Yeah, they they're just saving it here. The town report. I don't think any of these are gonna be interesting. Organizations. Maybe I'm gonna have to start reading the organizations. Locations. Well, some of these locations might be actually interesting. Culture. I'm probably gonna read uh, about culture later on, but uh, there's gotta be enough uh, for now. Go ahead, continue on. So, yeah, this uh, area is uh, definitely takes a lot of time. You know, speaking of uh, emulation bugs. Hopefully no one is gonna see that, uh, <laughs> that black texture over there. Oh, this guy is angry. Yeah, these guys still, uh, are not dropping the item that I need to get, uh, for Ziggy. Uh, okay, so there is, uh, like, a, a fork here. Uh... Oh, there's a safe spot over here. Maybe uh, the path in the front is where I need to go, but it's gotta be locked, so I actually need to go to the right to find uh, some sort of another path? I don't know. Uh, am I good to go, though? Yeah, I was uh, th thought that there was going to be an enemy here. Ah, oh, there is a treasure chest over there, containing Longhorn. That's a piece of armor. Uh, of armor. Uh, for Junior.
Only five points of defense or of vitality. Oh, better than nothing. Okay, uh, so I guess we'll have to go forward. So this area is not gonna be complicated. Okay. Come on, move fast. I don't have all day. I don't have all day. Come on. Okay, there is a door. Oh, flashy. Uh, is this gonna lead us to a new area? Oh. Oh. Well, I might actually need to be ready here. Oh, well, I'm kind of ready. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, but, uh... Is this where I'm, we're gonna meet uh, Kevin? Actually, let me double check if uh, emulation bug uh, went off. Yeah, okay. Game looks fine. Uh, back to 4K, viewers. Uh, anything interesting here? Cutscene. What is this place? What is this place? Uh, Whoa. Are you okay, Chief? Maybe you should rest a little. Well, maybe that's why she's angry. She's having the this headache from for ages. Yeah, by the way, viewers, uh <laughs> Uh, I kind of forgot that Xi'an uh, exists <laughs> for the past uh, a few hours of the game, viewers. Even probably for, for uh, 10 hours or more so. Like, she, like, why is Xi'an even here? Other than the, her, maybe she has some sort of, sort of an ability? I don't know. I don't know. Probably, uh... Xi'an, I gotta be honest with you viewers, Xi'an might be my least favorite protagonist in... in probably all of the RPGs that I've played. Like, she is abs absolutely... like, doesn't add anything. Like, she's like a, a silent protagonist, but... like a, like a Dragon Quest silent protagonist who, that... That happened to be even less interesting. <laughs> I'm okay. It's already passed. What is this? A dead end? No, oh, she's easy on the eyes. That's why people like her. Junior, look at this. These letters. Letters. Oh, down here. Oh, there were a lot of them. Same as the ones we saw on that floating landmass. Now, there was a lot of them while we were going around this area. Why is this so special? Momo, can you read it? And the angel answered and said unto the women. Women. Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. <laughs> I don't think that's a real uh, Bible verse. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. That's the only text I can decipher. The rest isn't in my data. Uh, is that a belief that uh, that Jesus was risen to the heavens uh, after he got crucified? Probably in Torah, like in, in Judaism and Islam, but not in, in Christianity. I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure. Hmm. This material, is it crystal? It feels like some sort of crystalline structure. You mean crystalline? I mean, uh, we can. Uh, 
we can pour anti-crystallization on it. And see if it's that, that's going to work. Whoa, okay, that's interesting. I detect this compound throughout the planet. Is it rare? It's the same as this pendant? Can we get rich? In other words, it's definitely not a normal room. Gee, how how could you tell, Junior? But this little room is what Ormus wanted to protect? I mean, if that's crystal, then yeah, that's a treasure trove. This is not a dead end. I detect a large energy source from beyond this room. Uh-oh. But there's nothing resembling a passage. <sighs> what is this? Xi'an? Someone's calling me. People are not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Start saying that uh, maybe she went crazy, you know. She kind of touched Udo, so maybe the effects are uh, are kicking in. Hey, Shion, are you okay? You've been looking pretty sick ever since we came to this room. N no. No, I'm fine. Shion. Chief. That's not scary at all. No, sir. Shion. Who is that? Why do you appear before me? Tell me, who are you? Shion. <gasps> Abel? This form is what you have defined me as. If you call this form Abel, then I am Abel. Okay. But I don't think that Abel is you, and I think you you are Udo or whatever we think Udo is. You're Udo, aren't you? I am just one of the ways that Udu is perceived. Kind of contradicting yourself here. Because, uh... People, like, Chion thought that you, uh... That you were able, but you... And you now he agreed that you were gonna be able, but do you also know that people know you as Udo? Why? Didn't you present uh, yourself as that? Udu wants to know. Udu wants to know. Know what? About the wills that desire a dissipating world. Everything about you. Everything about this world. By you, you mean humans or specifically Xion? I don't know any of that. Xion. Are you feeling pain right now? Is pain a method to recognize yourself? Why do you all seek pain? Um... Uh, nobody? Well, unless she on... One of those who like to cut herself or something. I don't know. I don't know either. Nobody seeks pain. You don't know. I don't know as well. No matter how much you hurt yourselves, no matter how much you hurt others. Uh, don't do that, that's for sure. It won't make you feel better. So why? Xion, why do you exist in this world? What does your heart try to see in the abyss of despair? Where is the real you? The real me? I'm right here. I don't understand. Where am I? Huh. I'm kind of getting an idea here, viewers. Maybe... What if Xion was possessed... 
by yet another MT, by another uh, higher dimension entity, when she touched Udo, when she contacted Udo. Well, I'm not gonna say she contacted Udo. When she tried to, of course, when she tried to contact Udo, I think I'm gonna assume that she's gonna go into some sort of a higher dimension, but. And I'm thinking that there's a uh, there's another entity inside of her, and uh, maybe the reason uh, the reason that I'm saying that is pr pretty much because of Nephilim. Nephilim definitely is also an entity that doesn't doesn't mean doesn't make a lot of sense, and she's probably maybe a some sort of a form of a higher dimension, higher dimension being, you know, with, of course, with the reference of, uh, with, uh, Abel looking like Fang and, uh, Nephilim looking like Ellie. So, maybe uh, there's some sort of connection of the events that happened in Xenogears? I want to know, what am I? Who will define me? That's right. I'm alone. Only that song heals me. That's right. He is the only one who heals me. Uh, who? What I want is... Shion! What do you want? Are you alright, Shion? I, yeah, I'm okay. What do you want? Uh, <laughs> speak of the devil. Speak of the motherfucking devil. Have I figured th this game out? Did I really figure this game out? Nephilim? And this time everyone can see her. Xion, what you seek lies ahead. But Jin also kind of... Jin kind of... recognized her. If you wish to go forward, you must open the door by your own hands. What? This room was sealed by the will of a woman who was able to call upon the power of God. Holy. She did this to prevent what lies ahead from falling into the hands of mankind. What's uh, inside of that? Why is it in Mictum? Why... Why did Kevin's mother had it? And why did... Kevin... Had it? And why did he gave it to... Shion? And why did he not take it back from her? And yeah, there's a lot of questions, viewers. Yes. <laughs> if her consciousness does not awaken... You cannot reach the truth that lies ahead. Consciousness awaken. A woman? Who? Someone you know well. Uh, it's not Fibronia. Uh, it's, I don't think it's Fibronia. It's, uh, like I told you, like I'm telling you viewers, I'm gonna bet all my V-Bucks all my slurp juice money on the fact that she has some sort of an entity inside of her and she hasn't awakened and that uh, and, and that like uh, she's trapped inside her when she tried to make a contact with Udu somehow in the distant past she laughed and cried together with you 
She is your other half. My other half? Now, in order to save this universe, she must awaken. But this will force you to make a painful choice. Oh, shit. Her awakening will erode and chisel away your life. If you were to turn back here, no one would blame you. Everyone knows your pain. My pain? No one knows anything about me. Oh, cry me a river. No one knows how I feel. I was always alone. Even when I called for help, no one listened. The only one who listened was Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, viewers. I'm sorry. I shouldn't I shouldn't have laughed. But I couldn't contain that. I'm sorry. <clears throat> That's not true, Xion. Everyone listened. Everyone wants to protect you. You're saying the same thing everyone else is. <laughs> that means they they do. Then why didn't they save me? Save you from what? They stayed away from me, like I was some kind of a disease. Trust me, you looking like that, nobody's gonna get away from you. Unless you, I don't know, smell funny or something. It would have been better to have been denounced or condemned. Xion, please don't lose sight of yourself. Don't let his words overcome you. His words? You don't have to worry. I'll open the seal. But it's not for any of you. Wow. Okay. It's for my own sake. And to take responsibility for what's happened to the universe. Chief, wait! Why do you torture yourself like this? Whoa! Hey, Valen, this doesn't concern you. Wow, it's, it's not even please move, it's move! Move, bitch, get out of the way, holy! Yes, it does. I've always loved... I mean, she's gonna die, so might as well say it out loud. I'm worried about you. Is she gonna act surprised? She didn't even act surprised, wow. Yeah, she's a she's a heartless bitch. No, no wonder nobody likes you, including me. I caused the destruction of the universe and everything. We still haven't. No, actually, we we didn't deduce that yet. Maybe in one of the parts that we're missing from the game that uh, we're gonna deduce that you actually summoned the gnosis. But uh, I don't think you're uh, you're responsible for that. Doesn't mean you have to take on everything by yourself. I mean, we, we're all. If we put our heads together, we can find another way. You're so naive. The situation is already far beyond that. Oh, pretty interesting. Uh, that word naive coming from you, Xion. Alan, what power do you have? Can you save me? Can you save my life? I... You don't have any power at all. If you can't do anything, then just shut up! Ooh. Chief... Xion, that's going too far. He loves you. Oh, gotta have to come out from someone. <sighs> Chief... Do you miss him that badly? Damn. Even with your body broken like that, you still have to see him? I've made up my mind. Leave me alone. 
Shion, are you sure? Yes. Uh, I thought... This is... This is that floating landmass. Okay. No. A piece? It must be some kind of planet. Isn't that a piece of uh, lost Jerusalem? Like you're actually on Earth? I see. Maybe. It's a memory from when this land was alive. This must be... Lost Jerusalem. Well, it took us how much? It took us 90 hours, viewers. But we're finally here on Lost Jerusalem. Holy. All right, TV viewers. <clears throat> uh, this is the start of a new uh, recording session. And uh, <laughs> with every recording session, especially since I went to Mictum, uh, my tell myself, well, let's hope that I can actually finish, uh, this game before <laughs> 2023, and I'm a, a few days away from, uh, 2023 viewers, so, uh, yeah, like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm not gonna be able to finish it in the, uh, in the next few sessions, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I probably would be a little bit disappointed. In myself, really. In, should I? Should I really? Should I be disappointed? Not really. Not really. But you know. You know how things goes when you, when you want to do something and when you want to finish it. And you kind of try to plan uh, to get it. Like, I definitely planned that this game is going to definitely take me more than 80 hours. And we just hit 90 here. Uh, but, uh, you know, especially compared to the other games, I think this game is kind of a little, bit, a little bit longer in that term. Which is... Uh, uh, which is interesting, but... Uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able, hopefully I'll be able to finish this game in the next few sessions. Like, really, I don't think there's anything uh, left here. Like, the only thing that we were gonna have to meet is Kevin and uh, Wilhelm. So, uh, <clears throat> like, I, I really don't know if uh, we are going to, like, a, like a, there's gonna, unless there's gonna be, like, a big twist. Well, I guess there's able to... So, but I, I'm gonna assume that Abel is gonna be, uh, be accompanying either Wilhelm or, or Kevin in a way, assuming that I know how this game is gonna is gonna go. Anywho, here, stop babbling, have a nice day, and continue with the game. If you want to finish it before 2023, <laughs> fair enough. Hijack, hacking into the brain of someone who has dived into virtual space within the UMN. Those well versed in the Omen and virtual space can f uh, can follow the access logs of someone who has dived into virtual space and tap into his or her brain. That's kind of dangerous, actually. It's kind of dangerous. Brain hijacking is usually only done by malicious humans, and the victim generally die from the destruction of their emotional and mental uh, circuits. Circuits? Circuits? Like, are we trying to say that the their, like, component in the diving machine that's called emotional and mental circuits that can fry and can kill whoever's uh, sleeping in there? I don't know. I don't know. Even if they do manage to survive, their brains, emotions, and psyche will bear deep and... Uh, will bear, bear deep and lasting scars, making it impossible for them to return 
to life as usual. Kind of scary. When brain, uh, when brain jacking is necessary during a criminal investigation in virtual space, it can be performed with permission from Federation police higher-ups. Damn, only the gov government is allowed to do that? God damn. <laughs> However, the Galaxy Federation considers such actions to be highly confidential. Not only does the average citizen not know about them, but most departments within the Federation police are left in the dark as well. Oh, I don't think that's constitutional. Like being uh, like uh, not actually uh, stating that fact that uh, yeah, you, we can actually sometimes need to to brain jack. Uh, di uh, divide and rule measure, a plan to subjugate the planet Abraxas to a uh, to a divide and rule system. Uh, not subjugate, subject, to subject, to subjects. Yeah, this is one of these days. Have uh, uh, viewers where have a nice day. Uh, sometimes can't speak English, like always. A plan to subject the planet Abraxas to a divide and rule system at the hands of the Galaxy Federation and the Immigrant Fleet Nation. The Immigration Fleet appeared in the Mictum system in the TC 4500s and claimed sovereignty over the planet Abraxas. Their holy land. Yeah, seems like, uh, you know, a certain country in the Middle East can't speak, uh, you know, the common language in that uh, region. <laughs> uh, a protracted uh, conflict between the two groups started in the Mictum system not long after in the, t in, the uh, in the TC 4600s. Uh, uh, the territorial rights went to the immigrant fleet. Uh, I think that was obvious. So, like, we're talking like, uh, like uh, the game I've been using like uh, Hebrew names uh, from the very beginning. Yeah, like Yahshua. I think that's Chaos's name. Uh, not sure. Is not sure that if that if Wilhelm was uh, is actually uh, like a uh, like a like a G, uh, like a like a. Uh, like a Jewish name or a Hebrew name. I know that uh, Wilhelm is... Uh, the name Wilhelm is... I know that it's Wilhelm, like uh, something like Dutch. I know uh, Wilhelm II, the last uh, emperor of uh, Germany, I think. Was he the last uh, emperor of Germany? King or emperor? I forgot uh, the, the title of... Uh, of the German Empire, you know, things uh, that that happened before World War One, even, uh, which is uh, strange, strange. But yeah, I'm, like that was like there's uh, a lot of uh, similarities, which I gotta be honest, I enjoy a lot. I enjoy these uh, like these references. Uh, however, when the uh, moderate Julius the uh, 18th was installed as the immigrant fleet uh, was uh, the immigrant fleet's uh, patriarch the immigrant fleet began to accept the solution of a divide and rule system for abraxas uh how does the system work though maybe the game should uh, explain it a little bit even though the the difference well the, the big problem here is that it's it's hard to be interested in something like that, especially if you don't know the history. And I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that the history of Abraxas had something to do with you know, uh, like they had the chance to actually to talk about it during the uh, you know during the story of uh, of uh, of Ziggy when he was a uh, human when he was alive as the Sauer. Even though the difference in their tactical prowess means the Galaxy Federation should have a formidable advantage, Federation leaders know that pressure hasn't gotten them uh, far with the immigrant fleet. And they are recommending this alternative as well. I mean, it's better than going uh, at war 
because war costs a lot. A movement to convert the planet Abraxas over to a full divide and rule system was first seen at the pilgrimage meeting in TC 4667. Ah, I guess we finished all the cultural entry. The only thing that we, uh, we're still missing are the unknown and the characters, which, uh... Who are we missing, really? Like, are, is the game gonna introduce new characters at this moment? I don't think so. I don't think so. I was kinda stuck here for a little bit. But hey, but, uh... Maybe the game is gonna... <laughs> Maybe the game is uh, going to, uh, you know, uh, to prove otherwise in the uh, next uh, few uh, events that might happen here. I kind of remember this area of yours. This is the area that's... The, the, we've seen this area when we went back in the landmass. But we're not over... We're not... Uh, we're not in the... On the landmass, by the way, viewers. We are not... Uh, on the landmass. I think we are back at uh, Earth. We're back at Lost Jerusalem. Yeah, I remember this. I think we had the ability to break one of these. As well. Uh, can we... Can I interact with anything in here? No. 